Hello everyone, Jules here. Today I'd like to talk about a topic that is part of a series that I have started on tarot and inner alchemy. So this is going to be part two of that topic and I'm going to put a link to my first video about tarot and inner alchemy below this one so that people could get a bit of a background about alchemy and how it can relate to tarot uh, as a supplement to this video which is part two and what I'm going to talk about today is the stages of alchemy and how this relates to tarot so I'm talking about tarot and inner alchemy which is about using tarot for inner work and for stages of change to awareness and consciousness. So I'm going to show some of the major arcana cards from the Universal Tarot by Roberto De Angelis. And I'm going to talk about seven stages of alchemy and if you look at the first video I mentioned that there are different systems of the stages of alchemy and I'm going to be using the seven stages system that is based on the traditional planets. So each of these stages relates to one of the traditional planets and seven of the major arcana cards. So the first stage of alchemy is connected with the planet Saturn. That is the world card. And I'm using all of the Golden Dawn Association, so I usually do. This is the first stage of alchemy according to the classical planets and the alchemists referred to this planetary system as the planetary ladder and it begins with the planet Saturn because this represents matter and this is representing in alchemy the energy within matter and it's also known as the primer materia which is the base material that the alchemists worked with and for inner work this is the actual embodied self so it's yourself as a human being living in the world and wanting to begin your inner work and help to create change. And the fact that this starts with the planet Saturn, as I know from astrology, Saturn is the heaviest of the seven classical planets or traditional planets. So this in itself will indicate that it is going to be a gradual process and the planet Saturn also rules the period of seven years and it actually has a 28 year cycle but very often this cycle is broken down to four segments of seven so that's just to give you an idea of how gradual inner work in connection with the stages of alchemy can be a very gradual process. So this is the world card which is connected with the planet Saturn and the name of this stage is called calcination. And I'm just going to look at my some of my notes here and I have to read my handwriting. And calcination also is quite a good 
connection with Saturn because the planet Saturn in astrology rules the bones and the skeleton but as you know with, cal with you, you know calcination is also connected to calcium and calcium is needed and it's actually to do with the bone structure itself it's also related to the breakdown of the body as well where the alchemists connected the planet Saturn with ash so in other words it is completely breaking down the base material to begin the first process of change so here is the world card representing the planet Saturn for the first stage of alchemy called calcination the next stage of alchemy is dissolution to dissolve now this is this card is the moon in tarot but it's connected with the sign of Pisces and Pisces is ruled by the planet Jupiter in regard to the classical traditional planets the modern ruler of Pisces is Neptune I see Neptune as a co-ruler so the I always see Jupiter as the original planet ruling Pisces and this of course this card is connected with water and the moon is very much connected with water because it controls the tides so this card has very much to do with the emotions and dark or hidden emotions and this alchemical stage of dissolution means to dissolve so this is to do with the emotional stage of inner alchemy working through emotions allowing emotions to surface like the lobster or crayfish and facing dark or hidden emotions because in order to develop ourselves and do the inner work we do need to face emotions that have been repressed and are almost hidden to ourselves so I think this card is a relevant one in connection to the stage of alchemy the next stage called dissolution and connected with the planet of Jupiter and the sign of Pisces ruling Pisces so this is the stage of alchemy called dissolution The next stage of alchemy is called separation. This is connected to the planet Mars. And this is the card for the planet Mars in the tarot. And I think this is a good card to represent separation. And it's to do with the, with the separation that needs to occur within. I'm looking at my notes again for a moment. And it's also to do with Mars is a very strong, powerful planet. So this is also to do with power from a greater source. And I like the word, I like the association of separation as a stage of alchemy because you could see these two figures here being thrown from the forceful energy of the power source from above the energy source from above and 
you know, there's two figures actually in the process of separation. You could think of this card as the inner yin and yang. Maybe it's a card where we could do some inner work about gender roles and our whole attitude to gender, if we wish. We could look at the anima and the animus, which is, which is to do with the Jungian terms for this. The anima and the anim animus representing the inner male and the inner female. So I think this card, which is connected to the planet Mars and the stage of alchemy of separation, I think this is a very good card for that. It's to do with the separation of issues within ourselves as well, where we realise we may have some issues that are tied in together and we may need to look at the different parts of ourselves. So this is the separation stage of alchemy and the planet Mars. The next stage is conjunction. And this is represented by the planet Venus. This connects to the heart chakra and it's really to do with the conjunction the bringing together again within ourselves after the separation feeling like we've brought those two sides of ourselves back together again So I think the planet Venus is a really good, and you can see the sign of Venus here in the card. So this is a good card as well to represent conjunction in the stages of alchemy. And I like the way there's lots of green in, in this card, which is the colour green is associated with the planet Venus. I'm looking at my notes again. Conjunction can also mean a kind of birthing of awareness within ourselves. And of course the Empress is associated with birth and birthing. So I think this is a really beautiful card for the stage of alchemy called Conjunction and the planet Venus. The next stage is called Fermentation, associated with the planet Mercury, which is the magician. And fermentation is to do with the formulation of our thoughts because Mercury rules thinking. And I think fermentation is a really good connection with Mercury. Even the metal Mercury is a reactive metal and, a, a, and that conjures up fermentation for me because it's a very reactive metal. And connecting this with fermentation, I think a lot of us experience fermentation in regard to our thoughts and our thinking, especially if we're mulling things over in our minds. There is a fermentation of thoughts. It certainly happens to me. So I think this is a great representation too for the stage of alchemy called fermentation in connection with the planet Mercury.
so fermentation of inner thoughts which can also become contemplation where we're where we are able to settle our thoughts with all of the different thoughts coming together we can come to a stage of rest more restful thinking where it's becomes a contemplation after the thoughts have settled so that's the stage of alchemical fermentation in connection with the planet Mercury. The next stage is distillation, which is associated with the moon card. The moon is associated with the High Priestess card. You can see the Crescent Moon here. Again, this is a great card for the stage of alchemy called distillation, where you are distilling. This, this is a distillation where it becomes mysticism. And this card particularly represents mysticism. Mystical focus. The mystical focus of the High Priestess. This is where the thoughts from the magician have been become further distilled. And distillation is like a purification and that's connected with water and the moon as well. There is a type of water, a pure form of water that's called distilled water, where it's a very pure form of water, purified water. So this card representing mystical focus and distillation, the stage of distillation that's why this is the sixth stage of the seven stages of alchemy because you're you, you know you're really achieving quite a great thing when you get to the stage of distillation with your inner work where you have achieved some mystical focus and the high priestess would help with that with meditation on the image would very much help to enable the distillation stage to take place with your inner alchemy work so that's the second last stage of the seven stages and the final stage is the Sun card and this is coagulation which is representing unity and enlightenment coagulation means to coagulate it means to bring energy together it's all forming one this is the the oneness the, the total unity within. So this is why this is the highest stage of the seven stages of alchemy. This is what the ultimate achievement, this is what you are aiming for, the joy of the inner unity and the enlightenment and that's why the sun is such a great association to represent enlightenment. You know, that's the ultimate light, the sun, the beautiful rays of the sun. So the planet 
Well, it, it's not technically a planet, but the sun is, a, is really the best association with the ultimate and final stage of alchemy. And this is why it is associated with the sun card and with the, with the sun. And this is known as the stage of coagulation, bringing together an inner unity. So that's the seven stages of alchemy. And I am, have been talking about this in regard to inner alchemy. And I'm just going to recommend two books as well that are from a Jungian perspective about alchemy and related to alchemy. This book is called Pregnant Darkness, Alchemy and the Rebirth of Consciousness by Monica Wickman. This is quite an amazing book. The author, Monica Wickman, is a Jungian analyst. It's a relatively accessible book. If you want to look into alchemy in regard to the inner, the inner self and self-development work, it covers a lot of different aspects of the self in this book. There are anecdotes, there are pictures representing some alchemical stages in here and it has the planetary ladder diagram in here as well. It's really a deep book but it's, it's a wonderful book. It has some quite famous alchemical black and white pictures in here. It mentions mythology as well and stories as in different fairy tales as in for example King Midas. It's, it's, it's a wonderful book. Here's another picture again of the work with the sun and the moon. All in regard to the inner self. I've had this book for quite a long time and I, I think it's one of the best. Here is the here is Mercury. The planet Mercury in a lot of systems is used to represent alchemy itself. But it represents change. Mercury is the planet of change. And this goes through different stages of alchemy as well. It mentions that as well. I'm fairly sure this is definitely still available. So this is Pregnant Darkness, Alchemy and the Rebirth of Consciousness by Monica Wickman. Great, really, really great book. We were thinking of, of getting, getting this. And the next book is very much alchemy in regard to tarot. This book is quite thick, quite comprehensive, and it's a unique book. Tarot and Individuation by Irene Gadd. The subtitle is A Jungian Study of Correspondences with Kabbalah, Alchemy and the Chakras. And there's also some tarot and astrology in here as well. And there are a lot of spreads in the back of the book. Quite deep spreads for inner work. This is a... This is the expanded later version of the book. There was a 1994 version of the book 
and this expanded version was published in 2004, 10 years later. This was expanded quite a lot, really, because there was uh, some additional chapters put in the book. And from what I can remember, I think the extra chapters, the extra information is to do with the inclusion of Kabbalah. I think the first book was more to do with tarot and alchemy. So this is divided into different parts. So there is the first part is to do with tarot and Kabbalah. And then the second part is, is tarot and alchemy. Tarot and alchemical imagery. There is astrology and tarot in here as well. And there is a chapter on tarot and the chakras. But this is from a Jungian perspective. This is an, an ama amazing book. The other thing that I like in this book, I'll just show you as well. There is a chart in here that's really quite useful for people who are not aware of the differences of the correspondences for the Kabbalah. How they, how the major arcana cards, the 22 major arcana cards being corresponded with the Hebrew letters, the two different systems of the French esoteric school compared with the English esoteric school. The English esoteric school is the Golden Dawn. And it actually has a list here of the Hebrew letters and how they differ between the two systems. So that different major arcana cards are assigned differently to the Hebrew letters according to the two different systems. I think that's a really useful chart in this book because I think a lot of people are not aware of that and they can get a bit confused and they can think, oh, well, I saw this Hebrew letter, you know, associated with another major arcana card or why, why are they different or whatever. And I think it's a really useful chart in this book to show the difference between the two systems. This book does use the French esoteric system. So I wanted to let you know about that because that's okay for me because I am aware of both systems. I actually follow the Golden Dawn, the English esoteric system because that's what I know and I see the cards in that way. But for people who would like to find out about the French esoteric system and how that relates to Tarot and Kabbalah, well, that is in this book, if you'd like to at least be aware of that. So that's really good. And the section on Tarot and Alchemy, the part two of the book, that's, that's really interesting too because there aren't that many books who, that actually cover tarot and alchemy. So it is quite a unique book. It's quite thick. Makes a great reference book. And the many tarot spreads in the back of the book are worth doing and worth looking at. I mean, I think the tarot spreads themselves, I mean, I think... I think the book is even worth buying for all the tarot spreads in the book because they're quite they're quite deep and they're they're really good for inner work. But this is quite a unique book. And it would be quite easy to get, but it it's a very interesting book, but it's from a Jungian perspective and the French esoteric school. But just keep in mind that it's not going to be an automatically accessible book. I think it makes a great reference book. It's a kind of book to dip into every now and then. And has an, it has an index at the back of the book. So you can look up different topics. And it's it's got a lot of diagrams and pictures in here. And, you know, it, it, it's very well done. But for people who want to look at Tarot and Kabbalah from the French esoteric perspective and especially if you, if you want to do 
further work with tarot and alchemy it's a, it's it's a very good book for that so this is tarot and individuation by irene gad i'll put the details below the video for both of these books and i'll also uh, put the link to my first video called tarot and inner alchemy for some background for people who want to know a bit more about alchemy and there may be a part three to this topic i think it, it it's quite likely there may be a part three coming along it, it might take a few weeks but i do intend to most likely do a part three to this topic of tarot and inner alchemy so i'll put all the details below the video thanks for watching and bye for now